in which these shortcomings can be rectified. Kia ora. The Right Honourable Winston Peters. Uh, Mr Speaker, this is a very sad and sorry saga of a Prime Minister who has acted incompetently and with a cavalier attitude to his responsibilities to get at the embarrassing truth that is that there was a serious leak on a classified document. And I want to say from the outset that if the Prime Minister had had, had, had wanted a proper inquiry, he would have first of all picked someone competent to do the job, second, provided the powers to do the job properly, and third, provided the inquiry with the right terms of reference to complete the job, which was to find out who leaked this classified document. Now, a couple of my colleagues have said that at the end of the uh, dual sets of inquiries, no one's any the wiser. Or with respect, yes, I am. Because I was the person who said from the day at the Select Committee, you leaked the document, didn't you, Mr Dunn? And the, that was the beginning of the end. And I didn't do it because we were taking a guess or a pot shot. We knew he had been the leak, not on one occasion, but on five different occasions. And it's not difficult to work out because you've got three, uh, four classified leaks, and then you've got one that says in the DOM, written by the same journalist, that the IRD is helping out in the Novapay uh, scandal. Now, if you put that all together, you've got to say to yourself, what's the common factor here? Well, it was the man who was heading IRD. You didn't have to be a rocket scientist to work it out. And then there were a number of other, what you might call, evidentiary matters that we looked at to come to our conclusion so that the Select Committee, when that was said to Mr Dunn, we knew where we were going. But back to my point. The interim report of the Privileges Committee into the Henry Inquiry following the Curtis Report leak is a seriously disturbing read on, on, at, a level, uh, at a number of levels. And anyone who gives a damn about democracy, and New Zealand First does, will be deeply unimpressed by what has been revealed. Something is seriously rotten in the state of New Zealand. We have had confirmed what we were saying from the outset that Mr Henry was not qualified in any way, shape or form for this inquiry. What's my evidence? Well, I was the person that raised way back in the 90s the absolute abomination that was being uh, forced upon this country by way of interpretation of form over substance on the matter of tax law. And the man heading up the tax in uh, uh, department at the time was one David Henry. And he did his utmost to discredit us and try to defend what were these raids on the New Zealand Treasury and all sorts of illegal activity. And then just before there was a full-scale, as you know, a commission of inquiry, he jumps ship from IRD and sets off overseas. So that was our reason for saying that. If he couldn't even get such a fundamentally simple thing like the tax law right, why would you repatriate him, as the Prime Minister did, by giving him a role, first of all, on the Electoral Commission in this country, or Electoral uh, Commission, yes it was, on, on this country, then makes him a Pike River Commissioner, when his forensic ability to get to the truth is zero, and then he made him the inquirer on this matter. And sure enough, and I am disappointed to say, there's nothing so antiseptic as a saying, I told you so, but we damn well did. That's right. We damn well told all of you that this man is incompetent, and now you can laugh and scoff, but the taxpayer paid him a fortune to do an incompetent job. We had confirmed what we were saying from the outset. He, it was completely inappropriate as an appointment. And of course, that's precisely why Mr Key picked him for the job. That's why I picked him for the job. Because we now have had an inquiry, but no answers from Mr Henry, just more mud flung in the public's face. He got to the conclusion that it must have been somewhere near the office of Mr Peter Dunn, who, by the way, is finding it so difficult to get off his high horse gracefully. <laughs> Did you see his press, press release yesterday? Oh, no, he wasn't going to lose this massive, long-held, century-old right of confidentiality between, between constituents and an MP. As though this, what, this, that's what happened. 
No, no, Mr Dunn, you leaked a classified document and on our crimes legislation, that's a crime. Just because the police aren't prosecuting you doesn't mean you're exonerated, because they could. And it doesn't mean that it's just because of the things of no matter. What was being leaked from that committee was of great importance. Mr. The Henry inquiry just left more unanswered questions, but one of them is not who the leaker was. The leaker was a serial leaker who leaked five times and has been discovered. But it's an indictment on Mr Key and his contempt for the democratic process. Our democracy is not just the right to vote every three years. Real democracy is a web of spoken and unspoken rules and conventions that give it genuine meaning and not just the appearance of democracy. To have a proper inquiry, have the correct terms of reference so that they can get to the truth, give that person the powers to get to the truth and then pick the right person who can be trusted to get to the truth. He did none of those three things. He just didn't care. The privacy of the media communications is one of those aspects that, that is vital to a functioning democracy. And it's a privilege that must not be abused. The media have a right to be protesting in this case because what happened with respect to this journalist was constitutionally and legally just plain wrong. Just plain wrong. But Mr Dunn can find no haven in that complaint because it does not include him. The Privileges Committee makes it clear that there was contempt for this principle, not just for Mr Henry, not just by Mr Henry, but parliamentary officials. But sadly, I think if the report is too, uh, slightly unfair, it is the fact that these parliamentary officials were being blamed in circumstances of undue illegal pressure. And in the end, somebody made a mistake. Now, these parliamentary officials uh, are the guardians of democratic practices. Because if they're not, who is? But screaming through the inquiry that uh, came out in our discussions with these officials was that they had resisted and resisted and resisted and in the end thought, well, he's got the powers because the Prime Minister says that he has given these, these powers uh, for the investigation and ministers must, be, must comply. But of course, in the case of Mr Henry, what he did was he distinguished out ministers and people on the select committee from the leader of the United, United Party, as though there was any moment whatsoever. It wasn't. But he distinguished it, and he does it on page two of his report, and he goes straight off track from thereafter. And uh, as the uh, Green Party has said, where was the Speaker when all this was happening right under his nose? Why did he and the Prime Minister not appear before the Select Committee inquiry? The report of talks of errors of judgment by parliamentary staff, that must be understood within, I say, the, I say, the context of undue unlawful pressure. And it leaves a sour taste, at least in my mouth, that Mr Thorne has fallen his sword, has accepted his accountability, that he went, and yet the Chief Executive of the Prime Minister uh, of the Department of Prime Minister and Cabinet, Mr Kibblewhite, offers his resignation but it's not accepted. How many times have I seen this not even complicated exercise in deception? John Key is deeply indicated in this mess too, but don't expect any accountability from him. The report of the Privileges Committee is a wake-up call. What this report shows is how the essential props of democracy can be kicked away. And when John Key is around, hypervigilance is called for. Key and his cronies will trash our democracy like they are trashing. Able to write all this own brilliant stuff myself, unlike those members over there. Have to have a research unit to write their speeches, but all myself. Key and his cronies will trash our democracy like they are trashing so much else in our country. Fortunately, next year, the public gets its say. Yes. And the opportunity to teach them a long and enduring lesson. Uh, Honourable John Banks. Um, Mr Speaker, I, I, I enjoyed working...